Welcome back to Britain's Rare Guitars. It's coming to the end of 2018, so what we thought we'd do is give you a quick rundown of what we've been up to over the last nine months. Do you remember when it all started? Oh yeah, I remember a cold morning in February. Oh, man, that was yeah. cold. In Birmingham at the guitar show in New Bingley Hall. That's right, but it was warmer inside, so why don't we have a quick look, see how we got on. Yes, I loved it. It was so good, wasn't it? Loads of guitars, got to try loads of gear. Did yeah, loads of gear and, uh, and lots of new friends too. Gareth here, and I'm here with Dan from The Darkness. How are you doing, Dan? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, tell us, what have you been up to today? And but you're here specifically for Marshall, is that right? That's right, yeah. It was, um, it was, they asked me to come and sort of demonstrate my, my rig and then um, show people uh, what, what a, a Marshall is, inverted commas, supposed to sound like. N not by me being a good player or anything, but um, just by the sheer volume oh, yeah. and versatility of the It was loud. Yeah. Dan Hawkins from The Darkness, one of my first interviews. I was absolutely terrified. Um, yeah, but I remember going to see him when I was 14, to go to see The Darkness in the Birmingham NEC. It was awesome, one of the best gigs I've ever been to. The Guitar Show is back February 23rd, 24th next year. Go check out that website for more details. Next, we went to the London Bass Show, and at Olympia on the Ike Stand, I found an absolute monster of a bass. Hey, this I'm is Robert Paula. from Hi. Tony. I'm Becky. Very um, nice to meet you. Yeah, good to meet you. Yeah. What have we got here? Like, we've got a four neck bass. Yes. <laughs> well, it's this it's is the great. only four neck bass in the world. Ah, as as really? Ever, as long as you don't have a second. No, I don't. Uh, okay. I haven't I've seen one before in my life. Uh, tell me a little bit about these instruments. Yeah, yeah. So, what have we got first? We've got uh, yeah. uh, fretless. fretless, yeah. yeah. Okay, yep. if you're really regular bass. Nice and easy, great. And now it gets very deep. Yeah, this is great. One octave, one octave down. So. Nice. That's what we really want. <laughs> I'm surprised by how great that sounds. I would have yeah. thought like an Thank octave you. lower. Okay. Uh, would be a bit extreme, but um, this is definitely not extreme at all. This is definitely what everyone needs. <laughs> Next up, we moved into our new home here at Summerfield Studios in Birmingham. And here is where we had our first roles as presenters. How do you think we did? Um, yeah, that, that, was, that was a long day, wasn't it? Yeah, let's just have a look. <laughs> Welcome to Britain's Rare Guitars. I'm Gareth Circuit. And I'm Becky Baldwin. And today we've got some really cool guests for you. Hi, this is Becky Baldwin here with Britain's Rare Guitars. I've got Paul Flatley here with us and he's going to run through his, all his bass pedals on his pedal board. Hey guys, welcome back to Britain's Rare Guitars. Today we've got one of them guitars from South Cambridgeshire and Odin is going to tell us all about one of them guitars. Cool, so uh, one of them guitars, I think they're really exciting to play, but I'm wondering what is the neck made out of? Welcome to Britain's Rare Guitars. We're here today with Rob and Alex from RD Amplification. Hi, welcome to Britain's Rare Guitars. I'm Becky Baldwin. And I'm Gareth Circuit. And we've got Chicken Bone John here in the studio with us. Hi guys, welcome back to Britain's Rare Guitars. We're here again with Ben from The Gear Garage. How you doing, mate? I'm very good, thank you. See, that wasn't so bad. Although, how many takes did you need? A lot. I couldn't remember his name. His name's Ben Morgan, but I had to call him Morgan Freeman like several times just to remember his surname. Hey guys, welcome back to Britain's Rare Guitars. We're back again with Ben Morgan from The Gear Garage. How you doing, Ben? Now, we've had all sorts of guitars and basses in the studio here. What have been your favourites? Well, I have to say, the, even though it was one of my first interviews, and we've done so many since, it's still that 1952 gold top Ben Morgan oh, yeah. brought in. Uh, that played like nothing else. That was so good. <laughs> but 
But I did also enjoy the uh, chicken bone drum guitars, the three string ones. Do you remember in teaching us how to do that? Oh yeah, I think we did all right actually. Well, we'll see, yeah. <laughs> At the Birmingham Guitar Show, we spoke to the company One of Them Guitars. So as well as restoring classic cars, they also make their own guitars. Yeah, their instruments are pretty weird and amazing. Um, they, what they've done, they've got four string bass and they've got six string and a seven string, but they've um, got really nice scalloped necks, real big scallops in them. You have to see them to believe them, don't you? Yeah, let's go check them out now. Where did you come up with this amazing concept for the neck? So it all started about five or six years ago. Um, Scalloped guitars, if I may. Scalloping in that way is nothing new. It's been done before, like you see on a Richie Blackmore Strat or Sinister Gates. Steve Vai. Steve Vai, Ingwe Malmsteen. People have been playing scalloped guitars. So we thought, why don't we scallop our own guitar? And as we started, we got a bit carried away and a bit exuberant. So we went in at the front and then we started going around the side. And initially, we just really enjoyed the aesthetic. We were, oh, blimey, that looks cool. So Dad brought it home and honestly, I was aghast. I thought it was horrible. What have you done to this? And he insisted, just play it, just play it, just get used to it. And then all of a sudden, after a couple of weeks, it just clicked. Because there is less there, you can do more. You don't feel the inclination to touch as much of the neck. Now, as, a, as guitar players, um, you do have to play slightly lighter, isn't that right? Yep, it forces you to have mm. a lighter touch. Now, you may not know that Gareth over here is a massive pedal head. How many pedals have you got? Far too many, to be honest. Uh, I can't fit them all on my pedal board. But when um, Paul from Flatly Guitar Pedals came in, he came in with these, do you remember how big they were? They were massive, he had like yep. three of them. Um, yeah, I couldn't resist. I loved them. They looked amazing and they sound great. Uh, yeah, I actually ended up buying a one or two of him. How surprising. We're here again with Paul Flatley from Flatley Pedals and he's got an even bigger board for us today. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna run through each pedal and you're gonna tell us all about it. Okay, we'll start with the Nirvana, which is an analog delay, so I'll kick that in for you. Yes, please, go on. That's nice. If we kick that in with the Valkyrie, which is a nice creamy chorus sound. Okay, yeah. Uh... Oh, it's that, it's that. That's the sound. Yeah, Instantly. That's the one. More information on Flatley Guitar Pedals on the Britain's Ray Guitar website. Back in May, I was off touring, so we had to send our crew down to Berlin on their own and they went to the Holy Grail Guitar Show. Yes, and thanks to BIM, we had some students, Florian and Dan, to show us around the show. Let's uh, take a quick look at how they got on. Welcome back to Britain's Rare Guitars. I'm Dan, and we're here at the Estrel Center for the Holy Grail Guitar Show. Let's go take a look around. My favourite interview was when Lars Mullen came in and he is the journalist, mm -hmm. uh, collector and also a guitar player. Yeah. He brought in loads of his collection, uh, lots of music vox instruments from the States and we played some status quo together. We did, didn't we? Let's check that out. So your time at the NAMM show, you must see lots of interesting instruments, which I guess brings us on to here. Uh, we've got the music vox, space ranger, bass and guitar. Can you tell us some more about these instruments? I, I like, I've always had a bent for something a little bit unusual, having lots of straps, Les Pauls and stuff. I just like something outrageous and I met this guy who makes these. Uh, that's the six string Space Ranger in Taxi Cab Yellow. I've put the dice on the, um, 
Oh, <laughs> things a little bit. I was at a NAMM show, I think it must have been uh, mid-90s, something like that, quite a while ago. Guitars as far as you can see. And I can see these cashew nut hockey stick headstocks sticking up because he had them. Oh, I mean, what on earth is that? <laughs> Les Paul sat by the fire with all sorts, had a little meltdown. But bless him, he's gone on, he's still pumping them out and using like 50s Dan Deere adverts and rockets and stuff. But the latest ones have got horns right up here and pointy horns up here. And there's a lot of credible artists playing them there. Now I really love playing those guitars in the studio, but what's even better is when we get to leave the studio and go somewhere else. Where yes. Have you been? While you were off touring, I went to ATB Guitars down in Cheltenham to check out their guitar lounge. I'm telling you, it was guitar heaven. All right, Mike, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. Hi, Gareth. Good to see you. Thanks, wow. thanks very much for coming over. Oh. Welcome to ATB Guitars. What a pleasure. This is fantastic. We have the ESs, Switchmasters, so Les Pauls, Les Paul Juniors, Cherry ES Thinline guitars. Yeah, lovely uh, row of red there, isn't it? Stratocasters, Telecasters. This one is an exceedingly rare custom colour, custom Telecaster from 1965. Factory finished in Firemist Gold. Wow, it's gorgeous. Well, it really looks like you had some fun there. But did you take anything home with you? Well, I was tempted, but to be honest, they're, they're quite expensive. They're really high-end guitars, relics, you know, bit, nice. bits of history. But if you want to, like, lend me money and go halves on something, we, we could talk about that. Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it plays like a dream. Um, wouldn't know that that was 50 years old. This is phenomenal. Well worth the money, well worth the investment. Love it. Mike, can I take it home? No. <laughs> we are always really keen to promote British luthiers here, and especially if they're using British timbers as well. Yes, back in August we had Rosie from Turnstone Guitars coming in, and she brought her E-Series with her, and she even let me play one of my own compositions on it. Let's take a look. Really beautiful sounding instruments. Yes, and if you want any more information, check out the website. While we're talking about UK luthiers, we've got to remember our friend Shemek from Druskowski Guitars. Of course, especially when we had just heard he's finished a signature model for Jordan Rudess from Dream Theatre. We had to get him on the show. There was something really cool that happened at the NAMM show. What was it? Oh yeah, NAMM show was great. And the best thing which happened on the NAMM show is that I met my hero, my, my kind of like a one of the best keyboard player on the planet Earth, which is Jordan Rudess, who, is, uh, who come to my stand and he tried my guitars and he really loved the, the Octane. So he asked me to make him one. So right now I'm making the Wizard's guitar, which will be the Octane. Why is it called with, the Wizard? Uh, yeah, the Wizard, because Jordan is a Wizard, you know. <laughs> He's an amazing person as well and um, such a very mature musician, so he can hear everything mm. probably better than everybody else. And it's going to be exactly the same as and this indeed, guitar. It's going to be exactly the same as this guitar, apart from the inlay, which will be the Wizard logo, mm -hmm. and it will be different pickups with different wiring options for more sound opportunities. Wow. Obviously, any guitar, or either Octane or Dracos or any other, could be wired uh, or to your specific preparation, and also pickups as Excellent. well as the hardware could be chosen to be different. Well, thanks, Shemek. Well, if it's good enough for Dream Theatre, it's good enough for you. And Shemek's going to really show off this guitar for us now. I will give it a go. Yeah, let's go <laughs> plug it in. We also had the latest electroacoustic basses come in from Gillet Guitars. And those basses have been around for a little while, but Gareth here was one of the first people to try out the prototype guitars. And let's have a listen to how he did. All right, well, there's plenty going on as well with the pickup yeah. side yeah, of things. It's yeah. not just these two. You've got a single coil, yeah. a humbucker, yeah. and under the saddle, uh, piezo transducers. Correct. I always stutter when I say yeah. that. 
Yeah. Right, so... And you've got, I mean, we've spent a lot of time and effort in getting this right. So if you're a telly player, you'll be familiar with the three position pole switch, um, which enables you to control um, all pickups here. But also you have this, you can turn those out and then you can just go on the pizza only. So if you're a, a folk singer and guitar player, you just want to have an acoustic guitar sound, well, do away with the mag pickups and just have the pizza. Back in September, I went down to see Crimson Guitars on the South Coast. Now, Crimson Guitars is run by internet personality and guitar luthier and all-round good man, Ben Crow and his team. So while you were down there, you met up with Sophie Burrell and you got a VIP tour around the studio. Let's have a look at that. I, I think uh, you're slightly affiliated with Crimson now. You've been in my studio. <laughs> what, are, what are you doing in my studio? Tell us about this. How many hours have you been spent on this one? Uh, it was supposed to be four days. I'm about 14 days in now, uh, <laughs> which wasn't the plan. I absolutely love my life. I get to build guitars. I get to build whatever I fancy building now. So um, is yeah. this the only thing you're working on at the moment? Oh, hell no. I've got at least I've got at least a dozen guitars in here right now. The the other fun one is uh, oh. the 90 hour build. This is uh, for our Patreon supporters at the moment. A big welcome back to James. How you doing, man? You alright? I'm very well, thank you. Cool. Um, what have you been up to recently? Um, mainly session kind of stuff. Um, working with a couple of bands, looking at um, doing some recording and live stuff, and then my own social media stuff past that. Yeah, you've got to do that, haven't you? Every day. Fred, so yeah. now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for us, you've been working uh, with Luthiers and like talking to them in our Access All Areas uh, feature. How's that been going? It went really well. Um, we, went, we went over to Oswald Street, um, see Patrick James Ogle. Um, Obviously, he produces his own guitars, they're stunning instruments, mm -hmm. and they play really well. Um, and he showed us around his workshop. And yeah, just great guitars. Welcome back to Britain's Rare Guitars. I'm here with Patrick. So Patrick, we've had a look around your workshop. Tell us where we are. In the world, in we, the are in, we are in Oswestry, which okay. not many people have heard of, but we're about an hour south of Liverpool, right, okay. on the North Wales border, just about in England. So we've seen a few of the models in the workshop. Could you tell me a little bit more specs-wise about each one? So uh, what we pr uh, probably build most of is the 96 model, which is our S-style guitar. They predominantly feature super light one-piece swamp ash bodies, you know, selected for their weight. They have um, a range of pickup formats, usually roasted maple neck with a fretboard of either roasted maple, uh, rosewood or ebony. They all feature patinated pick guards, which are basically brass pick guards, and then they're treated with acid and water and fire and all kinds of things to give them these really cool, weird, uh, patina finishes. They do look really cool, um, yeah. Every single one is completely unique. Speaking of nice guitars, we also went over to see John Ambler in Derbyshire um, and he really just built some stunning instruments and um, I had a play on quite a few there. He's also been kind enough to let us see from start to finish three models he's working on at the moment. Um, so stay tuned to see how they progress. Welcome back, we're at Ambler Custom Guitars and we're with John in the workshop now. Um, John's working on three new models at the minute which he's been kind enough to let us track from start to finish. So John, what are you working on? Yeah, so first up we are going to make a one of my Icarus models which is based off the original Gibson Firebird. You can see it goes a really nice gold colour as I said. We're going to fit this up with uh, brass hardware to really set the colour off as well. We're also going to be making one of my um, Hellraiser base models, which is um, it's my own design. It's aimed at the kind of heavy rock and metal base scene. And now the last one, the one I'm really excited about. Um, talk us through this one. 
Yes, yeah, so this is going to be the very first Telecaster style guitar that's ever been made in the Ambler Customs Workshop. Made a few tweaks to the design, but uh, most of it we're going to keep under wraps until we we see the finished instrument. Perfect. I can't, I can't wait to see how they all progress. <laughs> Thank you. So as well as nice guitars, let's talk about the guitar collectors. So I believe you also have a lot of guitars? I, I've got a few. Um, yeah, the, the Strat and Telly and a few PRSs, that kind of thing. Well, go on then, how many have you actually got? I think it's about 18. What? <laughs> Man, that's, that's too many. Where do you put them? Multiple locations. <laughs> yeah. keep, keep them spread. So speaking of collectors, here's what happened when Barry Gaskell brought in a very special guitar from 1959. It was um, sold in Hamburg in 1960, Christmas 1960. When the Beatles were deported, George was deported for being underage, they all made their way home. John had no money at all and stayed for an extra week, 10 days, not quite sure. And Asking not quite sure who, money. Yeah. yeah, not quite sure who he played with either. Um, but we think it was either given to him to sell, to fund his trip home to Liverpool, or someone sold it and gave him the money. So, we don't know, we're, we're researching it. So wow, so this could actually be a bit of Beatles. He, he could have handled that in that the I'm beer keller in Hamburg. You wow. don't know. And we've got some proof as well, because in the um, guitar cases, mm -hmm. you've got two little plaques yeah. that, uh, well, well, one, yeah. one says, basically says that. The other one is it was designated uh, to the Liverpool project uh, in 1980 and the plaque says uh, in memory of John Winston Lennon, 1940-1980. But I think it was a project that never got off the ground. Okay. So I don't think it happened uh, until maybe four or five years later when the Beatles Museum opened. Well, it, but uh, yeah. we, we don't know. We're trying to research it and find out its life. Well, if anybody history. at home knows, uh, if, you know, if John Lennon's watching, <laughs> get in touch. Uh, we'd love to find out more about this, wouldn't yes, we? Yes, please. Yeah. Right, well, I'm really excited now, and I've got to play a beat <laughs> tune on it. Yo, yo. Let's get it plugged in. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing, and to think that that guitar might even have been played by John Lennon himself. So that's us all up to date. Yeah, and all that's left to say is a big thanks to you guys for watching and we'll be back in 2019. But don't forget to check out our brand new website.